Yeah, good luck for this period. Uh, just like for them, for me, the main thing is good luck for this period. For the dancers, uh, I know it's frustrating to not be able to go to party and to dance regularly. So try with your friends, your family. Uh, it's the good time to to push your partner, so your 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 family into dance. Uh, even if it's not the dance you prefer, but you just dance together. And for all the teams. Hey, all right, so I am now on the line with the Mr. Felician Rosa, who is a dancer, choreographer, as well as a teacher. Uh, you've been dancing since you, since you were about 11 years old, and you have a background in ballroom, swing, salsa, bachata, tango, as well as kizamba. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> yeah, you have quite the background. Yeah, um, I believe you were born and raised in France. Is that right? Yes, I yeah. I, I was born in Normandy, in northwest of France, twenty six years ago now. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Um, yeah. you know, I guess you know how are you doing today, Felician? I'm good. I'm good. I'm pretty good. My son is sleeping. My wife is working, so I'm pretty quiet. <laughs> so, oh, let me perfect. say, man, I really appreciate you taking time out today to talk to me. Man. I really appreciate that. No, it's it's, it's okay. It's totally normal, and uh, and I loved the persistence you had <laughs> for this interview because uh, everybody doesn't know, but. Terence insists since I think something like four, six months to have this interview. <laughs> and it was already always a mess. And uh, partially because uh, how Messenger on, on Facebook is like saturated of messages. So if I didn't reply, if I don't reply the day I received the message, the message disappear. And the new updates of Facebook, they just don't allow to know how many messages you have not read uh, instead of the, the old version. Now you just just have the new one, so it's it's a mess. So now it's good, and it was the perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, and I know I can only imagine you know how busy and how popular you are. Yeah, uh, now it's like it's pretty more. It's it's more quiet. <laughs> since okay, two amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so we so have long. to find new 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 things to do. Yeah. <laughs> I understand that, man. I I definitely want to get into that, but um, you know, I guess to start this to start this out, man, I would be very interested to hear from you. You know, please tell me about your childhood growing up in uh, in France. You know, what was that like for you? Oh yeah, I oh actually in France in the in the in the country it, it was pretty small because I only spent something like my three first years in France. Before to live in um, to live in French Polynesia, I left there with my parents. They were they they are still doctors, and uh, they moved in a small island in French Polynesia uh, from one hour of plane and one hour and a half of boat from um, Papete, the the main one, and it's the, it was a small island, Taha, uh, forty kilometers. For the, the 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 complete circle of the the island was super small. You can do it like in two or three hours in by bike. And we spent there th seven years with my my little sister, my my father and my mother. And then we moved back to France um, in I don't remember the the year. I was around 10, 11 years old. And uh, I spent the six next years in in, uh, in Caen, uh, in Normandy before to move in Paris around my 18 years old uh, to try to, to try and to succeed because I am osteopath. So to do my studies of osteopathy and to dance more also. So now, yeah, basically I spent uh, here in Paris six years to, to five years to do my, my studies and to have my diploma. And uh, in parallel, every every night I was uh, dancing or teaching, uh, mainly salsa at this time, salsa and bachata, before to start to dance kizomba. Like, kizomba is the last dance I, I practice for real. It's the last one I I, I spend all my time in. 
and and it was it was also the dance who kept me in the dance world. Okay, I wanted to stop to dance. I wanted to to quit and to do something else. And then I was fucked up because of Kizomba. <laughs> so I continued. So et voila. Et voila, voila. I understand that, <laughs> man. I uh, see so you kind of really gave me you know the the brief overview of everything, man. Try appreciate. But real quick, you know, going back to your childhood, man, you know, please tell me, I guess, you know, what were some of your, your favorite childhood hobbies? You know, what did you enjoy doing? Uh, when I was young, damn, I, I, I don't even know if I remember a lot of things. <laughs> I know in France, I don't remember a lot about what I, I love to do, or what I, I wanted, to, uh, my, my hobbies. Except, except some months of kung fu training and judo and this kind of things, but it was not my stuff. I'm too afraid to to take kicks in my face, <laughs> so I prefer to quit. Um, yeah, I prefer to evolve with someone who who wants my happiness than to kick me. <laughs> and in Polynesia, it, it it was totally different. The hobbies was more to play in the in the in the garden or around the house or at the beach or with all the kids so it was more uh yeah games with all the kids than something specific i don't remember if i i was used to do something specific except just to play with my my friends and my neighbors so it was pretty quiet except i was in french polynesia so it, that that was exceptional that was super okay. good hey yeah, no, i understand that <laughs> So, so real quick, let me. So, tell me this thing. You know, you're growing up in, in French Polynesia. Um, you know, tell me. You know, I guess what did your parents do? Can you tell me that? They are they are doctors, both of them. That's so amazing. They were, yeah, that's good. I'm I'm good. <laughs> and, and so, so I imagine in your youth, though, they they were they were extremely busy. Though, is that right? Sorry. I said when you were younger, I imagine that both your parents were extremely busy. Is that correct? Uh, and finally, not so much because the once in French Polynesia, they had just one office for both of them, so they were used to one was working at the at the office uh, close to the house, side to the house, and the other one was uh, doing the I don't know the name like when you when the doctors or, or nurse and everything go to home of people of patients. To take care of them, so okay, yeah. they were, they just split the, the the work in two like this, and they switch often. So we always have someone at home, and the and the office was like side to the home, to the house. So every time they have free time, we were with them. So it was it was super good, and um, they were really present, like really with us all the time. Uh, that was good. That's well, like That's awesome. much better in French Polynesia than in France. In France, it was more usual with the college and the, the, all the studies for 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 me and the the job for the work for them. It was more usual. But, uh, the French Polynesia I thought was super good. So let me let me ask you this real quick, man, because um, you know, unfortunately, I've never had the chance to visit France nor you know French Polynesia. Yeah, I'm very sure. curious. Hey, I would love to. I would love to. I'm very curious, man. Can you put into words how has, you know, I guess, how has France changed or evolved, you know, as you've grown up? Oh, damn. Socially, you mean? <laughs> I mean, anyway, you can answer it any way you want, man. Anyway. To be honest. I'm really not be. I'm not really uh, into all the politics and and things about the country. So I am. I am not uh, a good people for the country. In in the in the way, I don't care about the country. I could live in any country. The thing is, uh, I just use the country like a place to live and to work. But I I try to not use the system for me and to not be too much part in into the system so I, I that's why also i try to have uh i try i i was um attracted by the kind of jobs they are not really into the system like artists osteopaths is two things in france at least about the laws and the, the legal part it's not really in uh, really 
well include in the system. So I'm pretty free. I pay my my due and I, I mean and the taxes and everything, but I try to yeah to not use too much the the, the French system. So I don't know how it evolved. A lot of people say it was better before. I don't know. I don't know. I I can talk about the the dance world because <laughs> I'm in since 25 years. But for the rest, it's like Ugh. I think for what I remember, I think people were more relaxed. More free and more warm with with each other um, before, like like something like 10, 15 years before, and maybe because in, now since two thousand three, I live in Paris and um, the ambience of the city is different. So that's also why I changed city, I changed count, uh, continent uh, during my life. So I I didn't pay too much attention to the. To the to the way to live of people around me, except my, my close friend and my family. That's all good. I should, I should. <laughs> you good, man, you good. So yeah, so, so yeah, growing up in, in, in you know, in France, um, and I you know, like I said earlier, you said you started dancing around 11 years old. What got you into dancing when you, know, when you were younger? Um, my father, like basically, it was my father. My father was uh, and still a dancer, like more rock and roll and swing dance. And I started to to go with him with him in few um, um, medical congresses. And it was, uh, if I remember well, it was a um, like a paramedical uh, retreat for for people for anybody. And my my. My parents were there, and I were with them. And uh, during the all the conferences and the the things for the adults during the day, they had classes uh, of different things, and also about the cl- barroom classes for everybody. Uh, the only thing is, I was the only young uh, boy to to dance. Everybody, the the average uh, were around 60, 65, something like that. So uh, it was not super interesting, but at least I, I put my first step into the dance world. And then when I came back to, to my, my um, home city, my, how can I say, the, the city where I, I live, my, my, my city. Anyway. Oh, your hometown? <laughs> your hometown? Or yeah, hometown. Or you... Thank you. Hometown. Um, when I came back, I just started to search some classes of dance. I was not used. I was not completely sure about what I wanted to do, but I wanted to dance. I I, I like the the fact to be able to lead, to exchange information and something with with people without to talk and without to have to know them a lot. And uh, I studied like few days or weeks. I don't remember well of that room, but mainly the rock and roll. After I think one or two years after the this first steps, I started to work and roll, and um, I spent like literally every day of my of each month during two or three years uh, practicing, and after a few months uh, helping uh, one of my um, fa- uh, one of my teachers, and I was the assistant. So um, I started to help yeah around something like. 14 or 15 years old, I started to give my first classes, and uh, it was my 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 schedule at this time was crazy. I was at the college, so it was uh, my eight something like six or eight day, hours per day of studies, and then I when I, I go back home, I change and I go back to my classes. So on on Monday I had a something like. Acrobatic rock and roll. On Tuesday it was a uh, Lindy up. On Thursday it was a uh, rock and roll six ta- uh, the, the six time. On Thursday it was a uh, I don't I, I I think I was teaching on Thursday. On Friday party. On Saturday party. And every two weeks on Sunday party also. So 28 days per month during three years I was dancing, 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 dancing. So it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time, and the good thing is I was living in the in my father's house, 
uh, my, my parents are, are separated. No, they, they, they split when we came back from French Polynesia. So um, I had the, the opportunity to move to the, the house of my father. And my father were more with me like, okay, we are roommates. If you respect the house and you respect, respect me, you can do everything you want. And that was a chance for me because I was 14, 15 years old. So that was super good. Uh, maybe I was maybe too free. That's why because I was that. That's why I think I spent all my nights dancing and and going out. Uh, but it was yeah. Finally, it was good. <laughs> that's um. That's quite the upbringing, man. That's that's crazy. Let, let me ask you this real quick. Mm-hmm. If you could even like and subscribe for the channel and share with the people, that'd be amazing. Let me ask you this real quick. It's, it's just, you know, that's your life, man. Um, going back to, you know, when you, you know, you're 14, um, you're 15, you're teaching classes, you're going to school. Did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up? No, absolutely not. I didn't know what I wanted to do uh, for my, my job. Yeah, since I started to teach uh, for real, like internationally, and uh, with, with Isabel ten years ago, I during my my first the first part of my studies till my um, back around the the final diploma uh, after college, around eighteen, I I didn't know at all what I wanted to do. I was I didn't want to do long studies because I'm I'm not a hard worker. I uh, really like to do, except if I am really patient, like for dance, you can ask me to train, I can train. But for the rest, if I am not like really into it, like generous to this, I will do just the minimum. I, I had all my diploma, like with the, 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 just the, the minimum I needed, just the minimum. Uh, so it was that. After my, my back, I needed to find something. I wanted to do informatic, uh, um, something like with computer, because it was, the, it was fashion at this moment. Uh, it was around 2000. So the, the, the big bug of 2000, you have to go into the informatic system and work with computers because you will, you will see you will make money easily and everything. And uh, because of my my because of my notes and uh, because I just did the minimum during my all <laughs> my scholarship, I was uh, not able to go into the real informatic uh, study like uh, the real one I wanted to do. So I had to find something, and I had the the chance, the opportunity one more time to do something new. It was a new one, a new. Diploma. They opened just the year I, I was looking for something. It was about statistic and uh, informatic treatment of data. It was something completely new at the, in, the, in another city of um, uh, than my hometown, 30 minutes by train. So it was not too complicated. So I tried, and after six months I quit because it was definitely more statistic than informatic, and I want I wanted I didn't want to do that. So I quit. I spent three four months doing nothing, just dancing, chilling, and and searching. I was like, okay, maybe I will I will invent my own my my own job doing something like a. Uh, like a baker, like a, uh, own a bakery in the in the morning and do my 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 parties and my my classes at night. Something like completely. I don't know. I want. I, I was trying to find something, and finally, my mother had a, um, had a friend. His boy wanted to. His his, his uh yeah his, his son wanted to go to Paris to do osteopathy studies. Uh, the one I did, and uh, she proposed to me, and I was, yeah, why not? I like to do massage. I, I'm recent. I, I'm pretty sensitive with, with my hands, so why not? And I like to the, the the philosophy behind the osteopathy to treat people and to heal people without to without to use uh, medicine, not just the hands and their own body. So I tried. And I succeed to do the, um, the exams to go in the in, to start this this uh, scholarship. So I I tried and I just did it. And finally, after five years, I had my diploma. I I 
I was still dancing more salsa when I came to Paris. I completely changed from swing and rock and roll to salsa, more Cuban salsa. And then I opened my office. I was I was uh, working in two offices. I had my my own, and I was working with another uh, in another office uh, with my best friend. And uh, and at night I was dancing and, and practicing and teaching salsa and bachata. And then when I when we stopped to when we start to teach in 2010, yes, 2010, something like that. I with Isabel, 2011, 2011 with Isabel. Um, after I think four years, I was I stopped to to practice osteopathy. I was not focused into my office, so I didn't spend enough time into osteopathy. To, to be confident with that. I was not, uh, how can I explain? I was not um, passionate? feeling well. No, I, I, liked, I liked that, but I, I was not confident, uh, not, not confident. I was not comfortable with the fact to not invest all my time in my job. So I was in, in between. I was dancing and doing osteopathy. So during the weekend and at night uh, teaching and dancing, during the day, uh, during the week, I was uh, practicing osteopathy. But um, dance, if you want to really put all your energy into it, you, you will spend all your day, especially if you teach and dance at night, you need to rest, you need to train, you need to, to have something like a... Um, a frame for your life. If it, if not, it's it's start to be a mess. You you will be tired. You will be you will you will injure yourself. You will be not uh, the best you can uh, for teaching and and performing. And the same for osteopathy. Osteopathy is one of the job you need to be focused. It's like the, it's a little bit like a surgeon. You you cannot be surgeon and and come in the, at the block with like a, okay I step two hours I'm still a completely jet lag and everything. So osteopathy, not for the same reason, but you need to stay focused, centered. And if you're not centered, you're not, you, you cannot like receive the information and understand how to treat and to help the body of your patient. So I prefer to quit. And two years before that, I motivated uh, Isabel to quit her job also, to be more focused on the dance and to have more energy. But for her, it, it was because she was used to, um, she's still manager assistant. And she was used to work um, between eight to ten hours, five days a week, plus the classes at night, in between two uh, to four nights per week, plus the weekends. And she did that during two years and something, two years and a half, and she was completely dead. And I was like, okay, you, you need to stop something. You, you, you can like, uh, slow down the dance, or you can just quit your job and, and focus on the dance. And finally, uh, she was used to. She's she's a hard worker. She can she can work really hard, and she's used to work since she's uh, 16 years old. So um, till 31, something like that. Like during 15 years, she was working every day uh, uh, and like super like hard and efficiently. And I and and her boyfriend come to like okay stop to do to work and come to the dance world and i think we can do something we already did something at this moment but for her it was uh, not comfortable not stable that we, we as we see right now the the dance world to be a teacher to be an artist to be a dancer is not comfortable and not um not stable like everything can just make you like put you ko in a side if people don't like you, stop to like you. If people stop to support you, if organizers decide to not hire you, uh, yeah, you can you can be on top and one month after disappear. So finally, we we stop both of us to to work and to focus on the dance. And till now, we were right. <laughs> Since two months, I start to think maybe we we should do differently. I understand. I definitely understand that, man. Um, bro, you gave you gave so much to unpack right there. Um, and I got so many questions for you. I have so many questions for you, man. Uh, Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um, all right. So I guess, man. I guess I want to go back to, uh, you know, that's the first question because my go. Let's go back to when you were 
you know, like 14 or 15 and you didn't really know what you wanted to do with your life. Oh, yeah. For, 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 for people, there may, there may be people out there who may be, you know, even older than that, who are still yeah. undecided on what they want to do with their life. And do you have any, like, words of wisdom or advice? <laughs> Maybe in 15 or 20 years, I will be more wise. <laughs> no, I don't have uh, advice except uh, to just try things. It, the, the, the thing is, the, at least in France, the way we try to orientate uh, people, like kids, uh, to a job, I don't think it's the best because we ask to someone to focus on one job or one occupation or one, one thing and to try it. But the thing is, um, we need to try, like for example, the studies. The studies is um, you have to do uh, informatic or uh, letters or science or something, but you cannot do a little bit of everything. And um, if you just focus one thing and you spend two, three, five, seven years sometimes on, on it and finally you don't like it or it's not your thing or you don't succeed, you're not, you're not good enough, you just lost all this time uh, because you, you, you didn't have the opportunity to do something else. So if you're not sure to what you want to do, if you don't have a, a real idea, a real passion you could work on, just try different things. Try to do... Uh, Try to cook, try to dance, try to, to do some sport, try to, uh, try to find a way to motivate people. Try to, I don't know, just try it. Try it and don't be afraid to lose a few weeks, a few days, few months to try something. But instead of just focus on something and, and wait to see at the end, it's, it would be my advice. It will not work with everybody. It will not uh, be efficient with everybody for sure. It was pretty efficient for me and I yeah I, I try a lot of things uh, and I also um, how can I say I I also don't expect too much when I try something I don't try something to to be successful I try something because I want to or I feel like I have something to do it but I didn't, I never tried, for example, I, didn't, I never start to dance Kizomba because I wanted to be a teacher of Kizomba or, or some, someone known in, in, this, in this world. Uh, the same for the dance. I danced before to, before to start to dance Kizomba and before to, be, to start to have people like um, students and to start to travel and have some recognition. 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> to have that, um, I spent something like 15 years to dance and to try different style and try a lot of things, and it was for me. And that's also why, oh, dang, we could we could spend like hours to talk about all these subjects. It's, it's also something I I I don't like so much, and I don't advise to the new people coming in Kizomba and hoping to be teacher and to have. A, like a recognition, it's if you do that to be known and to have success, you can maybe do it, but you will be really lucky. If the, the most of the people I know, the most of teacher, like famous teacher I know, like Daniel Nazare, Terence Cecil and Salsa, um, Anigre Adin's company, uh, Ena, uh, Albi and everything, all of us, we are just doing something we love and we had luck to find to 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 yeah to find good people and do the good things at the good moment but the main thing is we never look for to be successful we never look for to we never search to to be what we are now and that's the thing if you just want to be famous it would be more difficult than if you do something by patient one more time my opinion <laughs> I think and I understand what you're saying, man. I, I definitely understand what you're saying. Um, you weren't doing this for the outcome. You, you did it because you enjoyed it. Is that safe to say? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Everything I do, I do it because I like it. So if I uh, for for the dance, for example, I did different dances. I did I didn't do different dances because I wanted to dance everything. I just started dance and I thought, oh, that's good. 
Then, oh, another one. Ah, oh, that's good too. And different feelings and different uh, sensation. Okay, I will do both. And then, oh, this one is better than the the, the thing I already practiced. It it gives me more more things I I search for than the others. So okay, I will still practice a little bit, but I will focus more time on the new one, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's why I, when when I wanted to when I started to dance kizomba, I I quit. All dances I practiced before, salsa, bachata, rock and roll, tango, since uh, three, four months, something like that. And I, I just stopped. And then I heard about the Kizomba and I started to take classes. The first video, I, did, I really didn't like the, the, the style of the dancer, but I liked the music. And I came to a party to try after uh, a friend of mine um, insists many times like come 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 just to try you will see maybe you will like it when was yeah, this real quick I, when was this how, how long ago uh, it was in 2009 september or october 2009 i stopped to dance during all the summer and i was like okay i i stopped to to i stopped my association i stopped all my collaboration with the different association school where i i was used to give classes um and and finally i stopped Start Kizomba, and after a few steps, I was like, okay, I like the steps. And then the teacher was Victor from Kizomba.fr, uh, one of the first class, the real class and organization in Kizomba dance school in France. Uh, it was the first one. Um, he played the music, and the music was so powerful. The, the, the sound system at the party was crazy. It was a subwoofer, like one meter and a half. Uh, high and uh, like almost two meters large it was crazy and he started to play the music and it was like ooh, and i felt the vibration it was like oh i want to dance that i want to dance that and then since this moment i never missed one class one workshop he brought people he brought uh Penchuen vanessa Kundalima, um, bandera all these like uh elio santos Avril Chondre, all these masters came to, to france to paris and I was every time at the workshop, and I was every time there to te to to learn. And I, then I went to Portugal, and uh, for, so yeah, I was like into it. But one more time, it's like as I said, I didn't start because I wanted to do something in Kizomba. I started because I like this thing. And uh, the same when we started to when we started Kizomba, we were maybe something like one hundred fifty, two hundred people in all France, in all the country. Uh, meeting on Tuesday for the only party uh, we had at this moment, and um, and that's why we started to try to organize workshops and uh, afterworks and parties uh, with different style in in Paris to spread Kizomba. So we created Kizomba in Your Life. It was the uh, yeah collective so like being different people. We are we were eight or nine something like that. And uh, and then we started to to have more people following us for the for the party and for the events we organized in, in, in other group, and uh, and yes and af and after I met Isabel we started to dance together. Uh, I was used to give some classes of kizomba because I was salsa teacher before, so my friend from salsa um, asked me if I could explain some um, basics of kizomba. I was like, okay, for the basic, I, I can explain the basic step, uh, the rhythm and this kind of thing, but no, not more because I, I was dancing Kizomba since something like six months. And um, and finally, uh, so I met, Kizomba, I met Isabel, we started to dance, and we, we talked about to dance together and to do something together, to do classes together, because everybody was, then, was asking us, uh, like, really often, every night we had some, oh, do you, do you give classes? Do you have classes in Paris? Uh, the thing is, at this moment, we only had one, maybe two classes per week into in, in the whole country, almost. It was crazy. Like, there was, there is, was almost nothing. This is back in 2010, 2011, what? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And at the end of 2009, 2010, uh, it was crazy, almost nothing. Then, step by step, one, two, three teachers more, like Simeon, uh, Moon, uh, they started to give some classes in Paris. Uh, and I, I, I still, uh, I was still talking with Isabel, saying like, I don't feel it, not not yet, because I, uh, when I start to do something, I I like to have all the information, and after something like one year, I was like, okay, I'm 
I'm a good dancer because I have a background, so I understood well the, the steps and I practiced, I was practicing like almost every day. So I was really motivated and pretty good, correct. But I still had the feeling I, I missed some information, some new shades in the, in the Kizomba. And then it's only after something like one year and a half of practice, workshops, trips in Portugal, uh, training uh, with the, this kind of people like Quenda, um, Pechu and everything. Then uh, we decided finally to give the first workshop. It was in March 2011 and uh, it was a success. Like it was, it was totally unexpected, like something like 60 or 80 people for three hours. It was like, ooh, okay. So let's try to do something. And, um, and it's only in July 2011 we started to give classes in Paris. We launched the, the first regular classes. And, uh, and one more time, it was, again, uh, a surprise. And one more time, it was uh, the same way to work for me. As, uh, I do something because I want to. I wanted to spread Kizomba because I wanted to help, to be part of the community and help the community to grow. And, uh, and definitely at this moment, we had more people coming, but not everybody was um, available for the only two or three classes during the week. So we tried to propose something a day without any classes on Wednesday. And we started to do that during the summer. And uh, the, I, I will remember all my life, the first class, we were 22. That was super good. I was a 22. Like, whew, at least we don't have like just three, five people, so that's good. The day, the, the next week, we were 45. The week after, more than 80. And during all the summer, we were something like 100 by, by, you know, for each class. We had like two or three hours each, each day, each Wednesday. And it was like this, like every week. That, that was crazy. The first years of Kizomba were crazy. The classes, the, the golden age of, of classes. Now it's like everybody wants just to have to go into a party with class, with the, the clock room, with the drink and with the, the room after and everything. <laughs> but at this moment, people invest time, energy and money in real classes in the dance school. It was crazy. It was super good. Mm. Okay, man. Yet again, you have unpacked so much, man. <laughs> um, it's okay. <laughs> so you, well, can, me, you can stop me sometime. Huh? I, I'm, I'm gonna have to start stopping you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, though, man. Um, and and try and be as objective as you can about this question, man. Um, I imagine that you know there are probably in your in your journey, your dancing journey, there have been many people who, you know, aspire to be in your position. Can you put into words, you know, I guess, what allowed you to excel as, you know, as a dancer, as a teacher? You know, what what, what made you able to differentiate yourself and become successful in this? I I totally don't know. We totally don't know, with Isabel, why we we had the success and we have this success till till today. Um, but I think this the same question. You will have the same kind of answer with African Connection, with uh, Albir, with all the 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 main uh, names in Kizomba world. We one more time we, we do that by patient. This is a different thing. I think the, the the biggest name you have in the dance in general, not just Kizomba, but for all the dances and mainly for the art in general, uh, people are motivated by patient, mainly patient. When it starts to be work and you spend eighty percent of your time um, to that, and you and you sacrifice uh, family time and uh, other comfort of your regular life, of a regular life, you start to consider um, the dance has a job, but it's still the patient who leads you. So this is one of the first key for me. Uh, then the time and the, I think maybe the biggest thing is the luck. It's to be lucky. You, you cannot create all your luck by yourself. Like you can be so good in the, the thing you practice, you can be so talented if you don't have the luck to, 
to have someone who discover you or to put you into light or push you or or give you just the the, the good idea at the good moment you can stay uh, in your living room practicing and and be super good like everybody was uh, everybody still ask us about uh, how you, we did the mil pastos video and how this video pushed us in the, pushed us in the in the, into the light and we we still don't know because it was com completely random it was not expected it was not planned this video um we find the music but uh 20 minutes before when they released the music like dj ash and dj paparazzi when they released the music uh i just discovered the music like one hour after they released it and i was uh, already a, a good a big fan of soa the, the singer the French singer and when they released the music 20 minutes before my comment saying like oh i want this song i want to do, I, I really love it we just saw 20 minutes before uh, another couple of teacher we know in france uh, who say like okay i, I will write you uh, we want to do a show on this song and everything so first we wanted to use this song and finally we it was in october something like that or maybe no maybe i don't know september or october uh, so um, we're like shit we're fucked we don't want to to play on the same music and to just fight like kind of fight with so we will just wait they do that they release their show and their, their project and we'll see if we still like the music the song in something like six months after we'll do we'll see if we do something so um if we didn't have this luck to have these two people uh from bordeaux uh wanted to do this show on this song we would use uh, Mil Paso six months before, and maybe it would not be the same success. Then we wanted to do the show. Uh, we wanted to do uh, like kind of show on it. And finally, uh, it was not, uh, we prefer to mix different songs. So just one song was not enough. So um, we just abandoned the, the idea of the show and we decided to, and after a concert, we were invited to dance on stage uh, by Gage, a French singer who do some, uh, not kizomba, but he did some zoot music, um, uh, pretty famous one at this moment. Uh, we were like, okay, we can do something. And he really insisted on, on, on to have us on stage. I think this is the only one, the, the only time, the only, the only, oh yeah, time we did something on something else than, kiz than just kizomba. And uh, we danced on stage, and the manager and the director of the studio, the studio where we teach since ten years, uh, saw us on stage and said, "Like, okay, I really want to make a video, a professional, professional video with you." And he, he's uh, used to do professional video for dancer, video clips for singers, and everything. And he said, "Like, I want to do something." Okay, and then nothing during a few weeks. Nothing. Okay, that's good. So we just wait. And we start, we continue to do the house stuff, and he contacted us uh, in uh, maybe January, saying like, "Okay, we can do the video. I have a new camera. I want to test it, and um, if you want, we can test with you." Like, yeah, okay, let's do, let's do it. And it was so difficult to find finally an appointment for for him, for his uh, his friend with who he he worked on the video and uh, the video editing and us then finally we did that in end of february like almost two months after and uh, and we plan he planned a place the place were not adapted to the to the high heels of isabel so we had to move and just going out of this place and walking on the on the on the Shit. Side the of the railroad road. tracks, train tracks, or what? The walk, the, the yeah, sidewalk. The, sidewalk. Thank you very much. My English is so rusty. I, I stopped to fly it since two months and a half. <laughs> That's horrible. So we were just walking on the sidewalk, going to the the car, and it's like, wait, let's just try here. And he just put the the camera, and we started to dance on the sidewalk, and that's it. So the place was not good. The the choreo. We just finished the choreo. Uh, one hour before the, the filming, and we never could do the choreo once in, uh, entirely properly. So thanks to the edition, we, we had to, so many mistakes. It was five degrees out 
And if you look the the clothes we have, the outfit Isabel is like the half of the belly naked. <laughs> I was with a super fit thin t-shirt, so we were completely frozen at this moment. So nothing was planned, nothing was expected. He just released the video without to say us. He's like, okay, let me do the editing. I will release the video. I will tell you. And he told us something like two or three hours after he released the video. And he what it was already some like many thousand of you. So at this moment, it, if I, I have to precise, it was in 2014, something like that. So and uh, and in two and I think yeah, in two weeks, two or three weeks, we just reached the million of view, and it was crazy. And after that, yeah, all the festival like they already contacted us, but they. Even the salsa festival and the people who don't dance kizomba started to know us. That was the difference. And one more time, that's also um, why we we don't have to expect anything, and it's always a, a surprise and still a surprise for us. It's for example, Yami and Steffi did the video something like three four months before us. It was the same kizomba video into the street at night by night. Uh, good editing, good steps. Good dancers. So why our video is uh, like considered like like uh, really known, and why people uh, they don't uh, they're not used. To, why not the other why not the other video? So I I don't have any answer for that. It's like just I don't know. <laughs> That's the way things work, man. I definitely understand yeah. that. So yeah. Let like, me ask you this real quick, man. Real quick. Um, you know, you live a life that is very different than most people or you know other people man um and if i'm not so real quick if i'm not mistaken you know you are a full-time dancer right full-time dancer instructor choreographer yeah. yeah so yeah let me ask you this man please tell me for myself and others who know nothing about this you know what are some things that people may not know about the life of a full-time dancer that's not comfortable. <laughs> um, I I think if you if you I I will talk to you, but it's for everybody who will listen. Um, if you know a teacher or artist, I will make a little, a little difference in between teacher and artist. For me, uh, there is nothing bad into artist or teacher. Uh, for the, for me, the teacher will be the people who will only teach, and artist people who will perform. Um, you can be you can be a teacher and do some demo, but for me it's still a, de a teacher and uh, a performer can teach sometimes. It will be just artists if it's just sometimes. Um, the good thing for for this life is the recognition. Everybody will wait for you if you have the the opportunity to have success. Uh, people will wait for you. Will uh, will always be happy to see you. They will. Uh, you will be paid for what you love. Uh, you will live from what you love. That's something like super super cool. But it's a lot of work. It's a lot of sacrifices. And uh, so yeah, um, the full time dancer is a, like a really specific life um, there is good points and uh, and bad sides the the obvious good side is you you will be always uh, people will always wait for you uh, will hope to see, they will hope to see you they will uh, want to take classes and, and and talk with you and just socialize just just be side to you and that, that's uh, pretty crazy that's uh, the side of the, the part of this life I, I didn't expect and I never expect to, to live. So that's pretty crazy. But it's also a lot of sacrifices and, uh, and a lot of work. So um, when, you, you, when you have this kind of life, people will really often think we are just paid to, to have fun, to entertain people and to dance. So it's it would be pretty cool. The thing they don't know or they don't realize, and it's totally normal because we we hide this part because it's not it's not the, the goal to show them uh, all the work and all the the pain and all the the sweat and the tears we can have with this 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 kind of life. But 
the thing they don't know is, for example, um, we have only three in between three to five weeks, the uh, three to five weekends off per year, uh, including Christmas, uh, birthday, and everything. So uh, it's just three to five opportunities to spend a weekend with our family, for example. So I'm pretty lonely. So I, I, I like to be by myself. That's good. But Isabel is super into the family mood and the, the family cocoon. So for her, it was one of the most difficult thing to sacrifice. It's to accept, okay, I will go to another country. I will, go, I will meet people who want to, to meet me and, and they just like uh, put me in an idle position. Like this, they will teach, they will learn from me. From me, uh, I will be paid. That's crazy. But she spent. She she went to. I see my family every weekend because this is the only moment where everybody was, is free. Two, uh, one to two, two, three times every like six months sometimes. So it was pretty difficult. So this side is uh, is pretty difficult. We Sacrifice. have the chance. Yes, we have the chance, Isabel and me, to be in couple. We are married since three years. We are in couple since nine. So that, that's pretty easy for us in a certain way because we travel together. So we spend all the time, most of our time, together. But if one of the two dancers are not in couple with the other, if you have, for example, if I had a wife or a girlfriend uh, staying in Paris, and me traveling every weekend, teaching every night. If she's working in a regular job at, in, during the day, I will only see her, I don't know, two, three nights, three, three evenings per week. So it can be also difficult and it can not allow you to have a real relationship. So that's also why I think a lot of teachers stop to teach so intensively after five, 10, 15 years. Once you want to create something different than just a, a short relationship and a complicated relationship. So that's also why. And the fact to work together, Isabel and me, is not also something easy. We are lucky because we, we, we studied from the top uh, with some kind of, kind of rules to be comfortable in the Kizomba world. Because even without to be a teacher, to be a dancer in Kizomba with a dance was uh, like quite new, with new rules we have to discover together. Uh, I was used to the dance world, so the dance feeling we can feel and um, experience. But if you, yeah, for all the people who can see this video, you see that if you dance once, you know you can feel something super important, super, super intense, uh, will just completely disappear at the end of the dance. So, for example, this kind of feeling can be disturbing for a new relationship. You have, I will talk as a man, you have a, you have a girlfriend since, I don't know, three months, four months. You dance with someone, she's pretty because we are in the party. So, she's, she's, she will be obviously more pretty than your girlfriend in the morning. So, like just this point, <laughs> I think this thing can be a problem. But uh, she will be pretty. Uh, you don't know her, so this is the there is the taste of mystery also, and then you feel something super good with a super good connection. You close your eyes, she's like hugging you and everything. You can lose yourself into this kind of feelings. I know uh, there is, and still now, a lot of new dancers and even like experimented dancer who just spend all their life, their dancer life, to look for these kind of feelings because it's super strong. So if you if you're not able to to realize and to keep that in your mind that is just dance feeling and it would just stop with the music, you can be uh, it can be also disturb your relationship uh, the the real one. So these kind of things are not easy to in the in the dancer world. Uh, uh, there is also the, the image the people put into you because we are not like we are we we don't present uh, the um, the real us. To everybody so we are we are not fake all the time but sometimes I will be tired I will be uh, disappointed I will be sad I will be uh, upset I have a class to give I have a show to perform 
people, guys. people kind of idolize you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's the thing. So they they put a filter on you. They will only see your best part. And you, as a professional, we also have to hide the sadness. The the when we are upset and everything. I cannot arrive in class like. Okay, let's go. I don't care about you today. I'm just so upset. Someone stole my my car or my computer today, so I just don't want to be here. But let's do it. No, I, I have to I was smile. Saying, and... You're like you're like one part entertainer and one part you know instructor teacher, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we cannot, especially now with all the um, the people giving classes, the the all the opportunities people have. If you want to keep people uh, around you, you need to be good on every part. You need to be a good technical teacher, you need to be an entertainer to, to let them smile because you have always different population in your class. Uh, it can be the same in festival than for the real like, dance classes in, uh, in, in, the, in the city. Yeah, there is people who will come to, to learn for real all the techniques you can have and to you can give to them. I am one of the, the this kind of dancer. I, when I came to class, I, I want to to suck it everything off. Like, <laughs> give me your secrets. <laughs> and there is also people who will just come to enjoy and spend a good time with people, socialize, and just relax after like a tough week or tough day. And they don't care. They, it's not that they don't care about the steps, but if they can do it, that's good. If it's too difficult, they don't care. And they would come again and again and again. And, and we have different population. So we have to mix everything to try to group them into uh, uh, just around you. So, yeah. Now I understand that, man. Now I definitely understand that, man. Um, you kind of you spoke on this, man. But let me ask you this, man. You know, how did, how did you and Isabella meet, man? Do you, do you remember how y'all met? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we met at this like the, the only party of Kizomba we had in Paris. It was the Agua party, and uh, it was on a boat. And um, she came with Moon. Uh, it was his uh, her friend at this moment. Oh, well, it's still her friend, but they were the Moon brought Isabel into the Kizomba world. He was already dancing, and she didn't come. She didn't know the this dance. And uh, the first night she came, I was there. I was there every week, so I saw her the first night she came. We danced just like a sh shortly because we had she had to move, she had to leave. And then I saw her again a uh, few weeks after. Uh, but nothing special because the first dance were never um, didn't let me a good uh, souvenir memory because uh, she left me in the middle of the dance for good reasons, but I didn't know that at this moment. And then it's only, it was around uh, November or January, no, January, January, I think. And around in, in March, we had the first uh, French African dance competition. It was a uh, international competition, uh, uh, but the French, the French edition was the first one in 2010. And she participated to this competition with Moon and I participated to this competition with another girl, Monica, another dancer. And finally, after the final, we all went to dance uh, a disco uh, club, and they were they were used to give to play uh, Zouk and Kizomba music. And so at this party, we had the time to talk more and to dance more, and then we started to feel the this specific feeling, special feeling we have now, we still have now. So oh, we oh, like real this. quick, real quick. I don't want you to gloss over this, man. I got to find out <laughs> why did she leave you on the dance floor, man? I got to find out. Oh, because we were dancing. And when, when I was back to Moon, he said like, oh, we have to leave. So and he, he just um, make her a sign. And I didn't, I didn't see the sign. And I didn't know Moon at this moment. So uh, I, just, I just noticed we were dancing since one less than one song. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I have to go. And... It looks like an excuse. At this moment, I were not. I, I was practicing since something like three months, so I wasn't as good as I am now. But I still, I I knew at this time I was not bad. So I I already had people uh, asking dancers, like followers, asking me to dance every night. Uh, I was already uh, considered like as a like a good dancer. 
So I know it's like, okay, it's not my dance. I don't think it's my dance. But, and at this moment, I was not mature enough to say like, and wise, like to say like, okay, I don't take it personally. She has a reason. Let's do it. Relax and go to another one. So I was mm, not super. Uh, that's why I didn't invite her at first and bring the, the next the next um, party. Salty, you little say. Yeah. So now I can teach like, yeah, guys, if someone say no, don't take it personally. But at this moment, I was like, oh, <laughs> I experimented it. So now I know. Don't take it personally. I know it's an acceptable answer. That's that's big, man. That's big. <laughs> let me let me ask you this real quick, man. Real quick, man. Um, you know, you've been with Isabella, you know, as your dance partner. You said nine years, or how long has it been? You two dance partners. Uh, we are dance partners since nine years. Yeah, nine years, something like that. That's what I thought. We are, we are finishing. We are finishing not uh, how nine. Uh, oh, in March it was nine. Okay. Okay. So nine years and one month. Let me ask you this, man. For for you know people out there who you know who are future dance partners you know you've you've had a dance partner for so long man give me give me some tips or advice on you know how yeah. to make that partnership work and any advice words of wisdom communication the communication is the key like for real communication is the key before to start so to anyway. teach together we talk a lot about that. I, I really didn't want to at the beginning because I really didn't want to mix private life and professional life. Um, so, but, but even without to be to work with your girlfriend, if you if you work with a girl or with a guy, or I don't care. Like, we, if you work with someone, you have to communicate. You have to put some rules, like just the frame for the for the work. And you have to respect those rules. <laughs> and uh, it's basically, it's like a relationship with a friend. You have to respect. You have to consider the people in front of you. You have to think if you do something bad, um, you, you could receive the same thing. So if you don't like something, don't do that thing. If you if you work with some, for example, I manage the um, the um, all the contract and everything, and the schedule of our business. I could, if I wanted, I could say, okay, this weekend will be paid. I I don't know one thousand, and instead of two, and then keep one thousand for me. I know there is people who who use these techniques to to make more money with a. Uh, the partner uh i could uh, i could cheat someone on the dates i could say like oh uh dear organizer i can only come alone uh, isabel cannot and say to isabel oh yeah uh, it just want me so and do some things these kind of things i uh so this kind of thing you have obviously it's it's it looks obvious but people that um there is people who does that so um just like put it on the side Respect, consider consideration. Um, always try to defend your partner or to push him or her uh, like in into the light and up higher all the time. So these kind of things. Like for example, we the one of the first thing and a real fight I had to have when I we started to dance together and to teach together. It's the just the the macho part of the of this world. Isabel and Felicia, and not Felicia and Isabel. It's just something, but in norm, in the real life, yeah, we try to stay gallant, like especially in, in France. <laughs> so we we put the ladies first. So why in in the dance we don't put the ladies' name first? And I had to fight to like during the four five first years to all the organizers like Felicia and Isabel. No, Isabel and Felicia. Change the flyer. Change the names. Change the so these kind of things, it's small things, but it's small stones who will just help you to build your, your empire so, and, the, and the relationship with your, with your partner. To show to the other you consider him or her, like to, to use the idea, to, to listen it, to, yeah. For me, this is the, the most important things. No, I understand that, man. I definitely understand that. 
Um, I want to ask you just like three more questions, man. Real quick questions, man. You answer them really quickly. I, I want to, <laughs> I want to, um, you know, give some advice to dancers out there, man. All right. Okay, bet. So, so for for someone who is you know a beginner in something. You know, whether it be salsa or bachata or kizomba, you know, or Brazilian zouk, you know, yeah. they're be they be they're they're a beginner, but you know, they feel like they're stuck in this rut, like they're not getting better. You know, what what advice or words of wisdom could you give to them? Practice the practice, the practice is the key. It, that's obvious. One more time, practice in classes. So if you cannot afford classes, or if you cannot, ha if you don't have classes, practice with what you find. Find um, the the first years of my practice in, in all the dances were a lot of based a lot of on the videos. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, but um, but I I I will always um, advise to use the classes at the maximum because it's the best the the easiest thing. Uh, the videos if you cannot, uh, books if you cannot uh, afford anything else, the practice and to not give up once it starts to be difficult because it will always be difficult at the moment. The evolution, um, the curve of the evolution is always like super, super quick, then flat, super quick and flat and sometimes you go down and then up and up again. So it's really like, like this all the time. And we just hope and do our best to make it finally the average uh, direction uh, up. But it will be always up and down. So if you just give up after the first down or the, flat, the first flat phase, you will never go like, super high. So that's, that's important. That's frustrating. Sometimes you have to take a break. You have to stop to practice this, this thing. It can be anything during maybe one week, one month, and restart. And maybe restart from the top because you missed something. Uh, this kind of things. It's just, just like to feel uh, humble enough to restart something from the base, from the start, to be able to see like maybe I missed something. Maybe I, I misunderstood something especially with dancers. And if you practice, if you have classes, and if you don't feel good with the teacher, to feel free to change the teacher, uh, to, no, to change the teacher, to change the class, to change the class you take. You, take. <laughs> you have to change, man. Um, I, we, still, we still advise to our students to try different classes and different teachers, to not stay with us from the top to the end. Because some of, uh, like, Many of our students, they start with us and um, they just continue because even if they have friends who do other classes or they just hear about other teachers, they feel bad to change. I, I, I say like, just go, just go to try. My goal is not to make you dance with me. My goal is to make you dance. So if I can be the star, the in initiation of your envy to dance and then you continue with someone else, that's good for me. For example, the, um, the best advice for that is the, when you, we talk about Jojo, jo, Jonathan Mauto, Jojo uh, Kizomba, Let's Play Kizomba. It, was, it started to dance Kizomba with us. It was, uh, we, we were the, the first teachers, Isabel and me, of Jojo. And he definitely did not dance like us. So he just took the first set steps. Uh, he stayed a few months with us. Uh, and then he started to dance by himself, to take other classes, to train his own style. And then that's it. He didn't spend like more than something like six months, big maximum with us uh, because he didn't need it and because he already had something in mind with the style and everything. So just start, change teacher if you have the opportunity, try different ones. Like one more time, I said for the for the job in uh, to find a job or an inspiration, just try different things, and you will find you will find you will find the best one for you. And okay. it will be maybe, and it will be maybe not stay the same best one for you all your life. So that's why we still that. have to try. Yeah, I understand that, man. <clears throat> let me uh, let me ask you the continuation to that for yeah. someone who is an intermediate and they want to get to that advanced level. What does it take for them? 
Exactly. You, you, you just rewind the video five minutes and you resend it. <laughs> It's like practice, try different teachers, try to practice everything you can, uh, even not in the style you, you like or you think you like or you prefer, to try different things. Um, I, I will talk by my, for, for myself, for example, I, I still try to improve my style, I still have things to work on, I'm not the best dancer, I'm not the best teacher, neither the, not the best performer, but I... I do my best to keep my style and my way to dance entertaining for people and for myself. I had a, a long period, like maybe one year and a half, two years. I didn't, I, I didn't find the envy to 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 discover new steps. So I was just doing the same things. I was um, doing different routines. I always change my routines for the classes with it, but based on the same basis. And uh, and finally, after something like yeah, maybe yeah, one one year and a half, I was like, okay. Uh, Isabel Mew had some discussion about that, and I was like, okay, I really need to find something new to to give me a new push. And um, it was a bit of. West Coast Swing, a bit of uh, Central Bachata. Bachata. I find influences in Urban Keys, in uh, rock and roll, in all the different dances I could. I practice different things, different steps, different dances, just to find back the, the motivation to create new things, really new things in Kizomba, in my style, without to, without to go too far from my actual style. So... Sometimes it would be difficult like this, and you still have to practice and to to find to search different things to motivate you. I understand that's, that. That's what what I talk about when I talk about break to take a break from something. Like you can you can love chocolate cake. Sometimes you need to take a break, and then to go to uh, lemon or vanilla, and then when you come back to chocolate, you're like, oh yes, that's what I like. So exactly the same. I get you. I get you. I understand that, man. That's a great analogy. Uh, here's the last last question I want to ask you, man. <laughs> last one. Um, hey, can you give me one tip that can make anyone a better dancer immediately? Connection. That's the only thing we lose uh, since five, six years in the Kizomba world. If you dance Kizomba, um, just try, even if you dance like traditional urban fusion, I don't care about that. Just try to dance with connection. I mean, not just the connection, like we are together, uh, face to face dancing, like cheek to cheek or, or head, head, forehead to her forehead. It's just try to dance for real with steps, with techniques, but with connection. It can be, uh, a complete connection with all your body can be a connection just with your frame. But when you dance, it's communication. It's like when we talk together, we talk together. Even if I do long, 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 long sentences or shortened sentences, I try to communicate with you. And the same for you. Uh, a lot of people now in Kizomba, I talk about Kizomba, it's the same in Bachata, Salsa, and all the dances. There is always a phase in the evolution or people try more to show off even if it's to, to show off uh, for the partner with who you are dancing. Um, how can I explain? I will, sometimes I will do it, but like 99% of the time when I dance, I try to communicate and to give something to my partner, not to show her something. I'm not here to show her I'm better than her or I know a lot of steps or even to... Even if it's not just like a fight, but it's not a competition, even if, uh, even if it's just about how good I am, without to say you're, I'm the best, but uh, I'm, best, I'm better than you. Like, it's not, you're not here on the dance floor to show how good I am. You are, except if you do a competition. When you dance with someone, like yes, 99% of the time, the people in front of you just want to spend a good time on the dance floor with you. They don't care if you have like, super exceptional skills if you are super good into the music uh, and you're like use the music with all the the accent and everything if you just uh, are here to spend a good time with her or with him 
close your eyes and trust into the connection you will create. That's it. Connection. That's the, the my key. That's big, man. That's huge. It's huge, man. Um, Felicien, I wanna I wanna thank you so much, man, for taking time out here to talk to me. Thanks to you. Thanks to you for this. Like I am one more time, this consistency. And uh, and and I say I have to say also for me it's like we are 5 p.m. like 5:30 now p.m. and for you it will be like one and a half a.m. So thanks to you <laughs> to stay awake so late for me it was a pleasure and uh, yeah you you allow me to to talk about things like more deep than uh, uh, we do usually on the on the short interview so it was a pleasure really a pleasure. Of course, man. Of course, man. Real quick, man. Tell me this, man. Um, you know, do you have any upcoming events? Is there anything you want to plug? You know, share with the people. Uh, yeah, we have a uh, we have the first online classes we do this uh, this Saturday, on the twenty three of May. I don't know if the the video will be released, <laughs> but at least we start to to give uh, online classes. Um, so just look for on on how Facebook page. There is the information, and if it's not this one, it will be maybe the, the next one. And for the rest, everybody, everything is, is is in standby since the situation. So once we will have more information, we will be one more time on the Facebook page. So that's it. Hey, hey, and real quick, real quick, tell me this, man. Uh, how can people reach out to you? You know, how can they get in contact with you? Facebook, websites, uh, Instagram. This is the, 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 the easiest way. On the website, you have everything on, about what we do and the contact, the, the mail, the phone and everything. On Facebook, we post like videos and everything. We have a group on Facebook uh, for music, uh, tracks and everything. But basically, if you just type Isabel Felician somewhere, you should find us. <laughs> so it's pretty easy. Uh, but Facebook page is the most uh, the, the, the obvious one. When I when I uh, upload this, I'm gonna make sure I put all your, you know, the website, Instagram. I'll put all that information. Thank you in very much. Of course, of course, thank man. Well, and um, see, so yeah, like I said, Felice, man, I want to thank you so much, man. I really I enjoy talking My with pleasure. you, man. I can tell how passionate you are about <laughs> dancing. <laughs> I can tell. No, that, that's right. Yeah, that that's something I still love after all these years, and that's why I continue. I always say, like the the day I will be less patient and it will be more job than a patient, I will stop. So, if I'm still on the dance floor, it's because I like it. Yeah, definitely, man. Real quick before we close this out, Felicia, and, um, you know, is there any last words you want to give to the people listening, man? Before we close this out. Yeah. Good luck for this period. Uh, just like for them, for me, the main thing is good luck for this period. For the dancers, uh, I know it's frustrating to not be able to go to party and to dance regularly. So try with your friends, your family. Uh, it's the good time to to push your partner, or your 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 family into dance, uh, even if it's not the dance you prefer, but you just dance together. And for all the teachers, organizers, and uh, people who invest time money and energy in the in the this community good luck for you guys um if as a attendees if as a student you have the opportunity to support your teachers uh taking online classes um keeping your your subscription of, of the schools and everything if you can afford it do it because it is the only way to have people who will still invest time, energy, and money after all this lockdown and all this mess. Because if, if everybody wants to just take back our money, how, like the, all the single dollars and, uh, and not invest for the future, we will lose a lot of organizers, organization, organization, schools, association, uh, festivals. It will be really, really hard for everybody. So that's it. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. We'll make it. We'll make it. Of course, of course, y'all. We're uh, humans are strong, man. We're strong people, bro. So yeah, um, Felicia, man. I, like I said, thank you, thank you so much, man. I thoroughly enjoyed it, man. I think this is a yeah, yeah, great way to wrap okay. up this episode of the Two If You Podcast. Thank you so much, Felicia. Thank you very much. Hey, hey take it easy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Hey everyone, uh, if you made it this far to all the way to the end of the video, I want to thank you so much. Um, my overall goal with making these interviews and these episodes is uh, to give a voice to dancers, you know, to give them a platform to speak their story. So uh, if this is of value to anyone, then that, that means the world to me. Um, my overall goal is to give value to the dance community. So, if you find no value in this, then I, I urge you to please let me know where I can improve on. Um, I, I truly want to, you know, just uh, give value and content to, to the dance community. Um, so, please let me know how I can improve, where I'm messing up, because to be 100% honest with you, I'm, you know, I'm learning along the way as I do this. I, I truly am. So um, to be able to interact with you know the dance community, it means the world to me because it it gives me feedback and it lets me know you know what I'm doing right, where I can improve upon, um, you know what I'm doing wrong, which I feel like might maybe more important. Um, so please, if you all could could comment and just let me know what you think, it, it means the world to me because you know that feedback just helps me improve. So. Um, Please comment uh, as well, you know, please like and subscribe. That means a lot as well. Um, but, you know, I, I want to say thank you so much for for just watching this because it means the world to me. Um, you know, I want to I want to take you on this journey of the Two Love Feet podcast. You know, I'm, I'm very excited for it. So once again, thank you so much.